Now, one way of understanding why subtractive submersion is used, and this is something that we have to remember when talking to, uh, for instance, school authorities who still believe in submersion. Some of the scientifically sound and practically proven principles of how to enable children to become high-level multilingual with the support of the education system, some of these good principles are counterintuitive and against common sense. If indigenous or minor children who speak their mother tongue at home are to become bilingual and learn the dominant majority language well, a common sense approach would suggest partly that early start in that dominant language and maximum exposure to the dominant language in school would be good ideas, like they are for learning many other things, because practice makes perfect. If you want to learn how to swim, really well, for instance, and I say, oh, go and exercise bicycling. Uh, people would think, oh, yeah, that, that's pretty stupid. If you, you may become good in bicycling, but you don't learn how to swim if you bicycle. And saying that uh, minority children become good or better in the dominant language by having a lot of their own education through the medium of their own language can, to many people, sound equally much counterproductive. So, in fact, both of these, uh, these uh, beliefs are false. What we have is an early start fallacy and a maximum exposure fallacy. And uh, Jim Cummings has written a lot about that. My husband, uh, Robert Philipson, has written a lot about that. And so have I. So, in fact, the longer indigenous and minority children in a low status position, meaning powerless position, have their own language as the main medium of teaching, the better they also become in the dominant language, even when they have less teaching in it and through it, provided, of course, that they, that they have good teaching in it, preferably in bilingual teachers. Okay, and then these are the, uh, the four types of programs that I have chosen to compare. The uh, following main types, there are masses of others. Firstly, completely dominant language medium education from grade one, and this is a non-model of uh, multilingual education. Secondly, an early exit transition program with mother tongue medium education for the first one or two years, followed by using a dominant language as a, the teaching language. This is a weak model. Uh, thirdly, a late exit transition program where the transition from a mother tongue medium program to a dominant language medium program is more gradual, but is mostly completed by grade five or six. This is also a weak model, but better than the early exit model. And uh, uh, fourthly, programs where the mother tongue is the main medium of education, at least for the first eight years, or even longer. And this is a strong model. And the strong models are the ones which succeed. Uh, research results comparing academic achievement of these children show absolutely uh, unanimously that the children from program types uh, A and B, meaning submersion and early exit, are as a group never likely to reach a native-like competence in the dominant language. At the same time, as they will not learn their own language properly either, because mostly they do not learn to read and write it, and uh, especially competently, uh, even if the writing system and materials may exist in that language. The academic achievement results are mostly very poor at a group level, even if some individuals may manage and do manage, as we know. Children in late exit uh, transition programs, program C, fare somewhat uh, better, but even their results are very often much below what they could be. And if we take uh, one of the big studies from this country, from 91, with the more than 2,000 students from Nieves and others, they had three groups, and these were all Spanish speakers. The first group had English only uh, as uh, their uh, medium of education, meaning submersion, but better than ordinary submersion because they still had their own language, meaning Spanish, as a subject. The second group, early exit transitional, had Spanish medium one or two years, and then everything in English. And the third group, late exit transitional, had Spanish medium four to six years, and after that, everything in English. Now, this common sense approach, which I mentioned, would suggest that the ones who started early 
in English and had most exposure to English, meaning the English only students would have the best results in English and mathematics and in educational achievement in general. And the, the late exit students who started late with English medium education and consequently had least exposure to English would do worst in English. In fact, the results were exactly the opposite, meaning the late exit uh, students got the best result, uh, results. And they were the only ones who had a chance to achieve native levels of English later on, meaning the kind of level in English that would enable them, for instance, to go to college and university and so on. Whereas the other two groups were after an initial boost where they were in <coughs> grades two and three and even grade four, a little bit better in English than the late exit uh, students. After this initial boost, they were falling more and more behind, and they were judged as probably never being able to catch up to native English-speaking peers in English or general school achievement. So the English-only uh, kids had low levels of English and school achievement and likely not to catch up. Early exit transition of fairly low levels, and the late exit uh, kids had best results and were likely to catch up with native speakers of English. But even in grade six, they had not yet done it. Six years is not enough. If we take uh, somebody whom Francois mentioned this morning, Kathleen Hoek, who has done a lot of studies across Africa and has summarized some of them, she says early transition to the international language of wider communication, meaning in most cases English, in some cases uh, French or Portuguese, across all Africa is accompanied, accompanied by poor literacy in both the mother tongue and the second language, poor numeracy in mathematics and science, high failure and dropout rates, and high costs, wastage of expenditure. And uh, both Kathleen and several others like, uh, like Ali Du and so on have several other studies showing exactly this. Uh, still, uh, Kathleen Herk, she says that African evidence shows that only a few succeed in rapid change to second foreign language medium. Initial mother tongue education bilingual programs with transition to the second language or foreign language by year two or three show success over years one to three, sometimes into the fourth year. This success starts to slow down in years four to five, and no early exit from the mother tongue to, uh, to an, another language, no <coughs> early exit bilingual model has been able to demonstrate lasting educational achievement for the majority of pupils in countries anywhere in the world. More than 50% of learners never get to secondary school in African countries, and in countries where there is a high high through rate to secondary school, for instance, South Africa, learners are not developing strong literacy, language, or mathematical skills. So these are uh, international results from many parts of the world. The largest study ever done uh, with Spanish speakers is Thomas and Colliers with more than 210,000 students. It is the absolutely largest longitudinal study in the world on the education of minority students. I won't go through uh, all these things here, but I'll just say something about the results. Across all the models, because they had lots of different models, those students who reached the highest levels of both bilingualism and school achievement were the ones where the children's mother tongue was the main medium of education for the most extended period of time. The length of education in the mother tongue, the first language, was the strongest predictor of both the children's competence and gains in their L2 English and of their school achievement. And uh, in their own words, the strongest predictor of L2 student achievement, meaning English language student achievement, is the amount of formal mother tongue medium schooling. The more mother tongue medium grade level schooling, the higher uh, English achievement. 